the normal probability distribution is the most important continuous probability distribution. Now there are two reasons why the normal distribution is so important. Uh, the first reason is that it has a lot of real-world applications For example, if you take people's heights, people's weights, test scores, rainfall, and so on, they'll all have a normal distribution. The second reason why the normal distribution is so important is because it's widely used in the field of statistical inference which includes important topics like confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. The graph of the normal probability distribution is called the normal curve and it has a bell shape. The formula for this graph is given by the probability density function f of x is equal to 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi times e to the power x minus mu squared over 2 times sigma squared. Now let's talk about some of the characteristics of the normal probability distribution. The first characteristic is that the normal distribution is completely differentiated by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. So if you have two normal distributions with the same mean and standard deviation, that means that they're going to be identical. The second characteristic is that the highest point in the normal distribution, which is this point here, is the mean. This point is also the median and the mode of the normal distribution. So in a normal distribution, the mean is equal to the median, which is equal to the mode. The third characteristic of the normal distribution is that the mean can be any value It can be negative, it can be zero, and it can be positive. So here are three normal distributions. The normal distribution in the middle has a mean of zero, and let's say the normal distribution on the left has a mean of negative 10, and the normal distribution on the right has a mean of positive 10. The tails of the normal distribution extend to infinity. These are the tails of the normal distribution. We have a left tail and a right tail. 
they get closer and closer to zero, but they never touch zero, and they keep extending until negative infinity and positive infinity. The fourth characteristic of the normal distribution is that it is symmetric. So in a normal distribution, we have the mean in the middle, and what's to the left of the mean is a mirror image of what's to the right of the mean. The standard deviation determines how flat and wide the curve is. So let's take a look at two normal distributions. Now both these normal distributions have the same mean, so their only difference is the standard deviation. Now the one that's flatter and wider is going to have the higher standard deviation. And this is because, remember, standard deviation measures the spread. So if the standard deviation is higher, that means that the values of the random variable are more spread out, so the curve is going to be wider. This, the sixth characteristic of the normal distribution is that probabilities are given by the area under the curve. So if we want to find the probability that our random variable x is going to fall between two points, we simply take the area under the curve between those two points. Now the total area under the curve is 1, which means that the area to the left or right of the mean is going to be equal to 0.5 since the normal distribution is symmetric and the mean is in the middle, uh, the area to the left of the mean is going to be 0.5 and the area to the right of the mean is going to be 0.5. The seventh characteristic of the normal distribution are some common percentages. The first one is that 68.3% of the values are within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. The second one is that 95.4% of the values are within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the values are within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. So if we have a normal distribution We have the mean in the middle. If we go one standard deviation on each side, 
we have 95%, sorry, 68.3% of the values are um, within that range. If we go two standard deviations on each side, we have 95.4% of the values are within that range. And if we go three standard deviations on each side, we have almost all of the values, 99.7% of the values are going to be in that range.